Okay, here we are. We are continuing in chapter four, and we are in section 4.3, 4.4. We'll be adding uh, five and six. So we are going to be looking at indeterminate systems uh, with forces, indeterminate with temperature only, and then indeterminate with both combined. Um, so let's get started. The assembly consists of two red brass copper rods, A, B, and C, D, a stainless steel, blah, blah, blah. Determine the average normal stress. Well, what is normal stress? Normal stress is the internal force divided by cross-sectional area. Well, if I want to get these internal forces, okay, I'm going to have to find the reaction because I know if I can find this reaction at F, if I cut it and draw my free body diagram, equal, you know, I can sum forces, find that internal force so that I can determine then that internal stress. Perfect. Okay. So as I'm looking at this, I'm going to notice it's indeterminate um, because we have just forces in the x direction. I'm going to have forces here at A and C, and I'm going to have a force at, um, at F, and I don't know that they're equal. You can't just divide things up and, and call it cut it in half and call it a day. Um, I do know that A and C are going to be the same because of symmetry, but I don't know here and I don't know here. So that's two unknowns, which means I it's indeterminate. I cannot determine with equilibrium my reactions. So let's get some material properties. We have two red brass and I'm in millimeters. So that means I'm in SI. So we're going to come down here to red brass and it's 101 gigapascals. So our red brass E equals 101 gigapascals, which is 10 to the ninth newton per meter squared because a pascal is a newton per meter squared. We don't need that. Its yield stress is 70 times 10 to the sixth newton per meter squared. That's a megapascal. And we always need to check that to make sure we haven't yielded because PL over AE is for the elastic region. Um, it's the same whether it's tension or compression. That's important to note. Uh, we have a Poisson's ratio of 0.35, which we don't need, and we have the coefficient of thermal expansion, again, which we don't need because we are not heating things up. And now we have the steel, the stainless steel. So we're going to go to stainless steel 304, and I have that E equals 193 times 10 to the ninth meter newton per meter squared. And we're going to come across yields 207 times 10 to the sixth newton per meter squared, and that's for tension and compression. And then we don't need Poisson's ratio or thermal expansion. So uh, there are our values. Sorry, I covered those up, but there are our values. Okay, so we have to determine our reactions to get the internal, uh, internal force so that we can find stress. So let's start with what we always start with. Every problem we start in strengths, we should start with equilibrium and our statics. So let's draw a free body diagram. Because these are symmetric, I'm just going to kind of like pretend like they're together. And I'm going to have two force at A, because I really have force at A plus force of C, but they're the same. So we're going to call it two force of A, okay? And that's the weirdest way to ever start anything. So let's sum those forces. <laughs> Shoot. We're drawing our free body diagram. So we have our free body diagram. So we have this, kind of looks like this. And I'm going to have a force at F. I have 40 times 10 to the third Newtons. I have 40 times 10 to the third Newtons. I'm going to have the force at A and the force at C. And by symmetry, those two are equal. So when I want to sum those forces in the x direction, okay, I'm going to have FA plus, well, FA equals FC. So FA plus FF minus 80 times 10 to the third Newtons equals zero. So I have two force A plus FF equals 80 times 10 to the third Newtons. And we can see again, it is, okay, it is uh, indeterminate. So now we're gonna work through this and we're gonna talk about deformation. Well, 
deformation. That's going to be the next step, deformation. We can use that compatibility of deformation. When I look at this overall, I realize that the change in length from A, C to F, okay, from A to F, that total has to equal zero. Okay, it has to equal zero. But when I look inside, I know then that whatever I have that is from delta AB, okay, plus whatever I have from delta EF, it has to be zero. And, and clearly we can see we've got some compression tension, so we'll have some negative positive, but let's just, we just, right now we're going to write everything out, delta AB plus delta EF equals zero, and our math will figure out which way is, is that negative. Okay, and what is delta? Delta equals the force that's in A, okay? The length of A, the area of A, and the modulus of A, plus the force that's in F, length of F, area of F, E of F. And we don't know those, um, E of A, a of A. Okay, we don't know those, but I do know, okay, I do know the relationship between my reaction and internal forces. So we can draw another free body diagram to get our internal force relationship. So if I look at A, if I'm pushing here is my reaction at A, then I know that the force from A to B is going to be equal and opposite. So the force of A to B has to equal the force of A, okay? And I can see very clearly that this is a compressive force. And if it's a compressive force, it's going to be a compressive stress. I can also look over here on the other side and I can see that I have the force at the wall Okay, that I've assumed going to the right. So internal, the force in EF has to be going to the left. If I sum forces in the X direction, they're gonna be equal and opposite. So the force of EF has to equal that reaction of F. And I know that we are in tension. So it is positive, this is negative. We're gonna have a negative stress. We're gonna have a negative deformation, okay? So up here, I have reactions. Down here, this should actually say force of AB and force of EF, because it's not directly related to the reaction, but it is, okay? So we should put AB, 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 FE, FE, FE. That's a lot of writing, okay? So now that I have the relationship between reactions and internal stresses, Okay, I know the relationship of the total deformation has to equal zero. And I have the relationship between our applied forces and our um, internal, or our, all of our applied forces and our reactions. We can now go back, we can put this relationship, okay, into here. And then our unknowns are FA and FF. So let's get started. So I'm going to come back over here. And I have zero equals the force in AB equals the force at A, okay? And it's in compression. So we have negative force A, length of AB, E of AB, A of AB, plus, okay, the force at F, which was in tension, length of EF, E of EF, a of EF. And I have this relationship up here that I have 2FA plus FF equals. Okay, so we have two of these that are going to be carrying the force on this left side, but I only need to know the force in one of them because they are both going to be having the same deformation. They're both going to be having that same deformation. And we don't want to um, add both of these up because they are not in pair, they are, they are. Uh, they are parallel and they are not in a like a sequence okay so we know the length we know the e then we know the a b and we have this nice little relationship right here so let's start plugging things in so i have fa 
and I'm going to move it over to the left side. And then I'm going to start adding in what I do know. So the length is 0 0.03 meters. Everything has to be appropriate units. Um, it has a diameter. Actually, that's the diameter. 0 0.3 meters is the length. 0.3 meters, 0.45 meters. The area, pi over 4. 0.03 meters squared. Its E is 101 times 10 to the ninth Newton per meter squared equals force F, length of F, 0.45 meters divided by pi over 4.04 meters squared. And then we have 193 times 10 to the ninth Newton per meter squared. And I like to just go ahead and write all of my units out there so that I um, know that I'm doing things correctly. So now we're going to set this up and I have FA and then I have times 0.3. And then I have pi as a number, 4 divided by 0 0.03 times, 0 0.03 times, 101 e to the ninth times. And then I'm going to divide that. And I'm going to isolate FA in terms of FF. So I'm going to take the reciprocal so I can multiply it by this side. 0.45 times, pi as a number, 4 divided by 0 0.04 times, 0 0.04 times, 193 e to the ninth times and divided by. So I get this relationship of FA equals 0 0.44155 FF. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to retype that in because I have time. And normally it would be easier to get rid of some of these things that are in common on both sides. So let's try it that way where we've simplified. So I have 0.3. 0 0.03 divided by 0 0.03 divided by 101 divided by, take the reciprocal, move it over, 0.45 times 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.04 divided by 193 divided by, and we get the same value. So this is equation two. This is equation one. Now I'm going to plug equation two into equation one. So I have two times FA plus FF equals 80 times 10 to the third Newtons, two times 0.44155 FF times, or plus, sorry about that, plus FF equals 80 times 10 to the third newtons, okay? We've got two times plus one, okay? And I need to isolate, I need to uh, isolate that, so I'm gonna, multi I'm gonna take the reciprocal and I'm gonna multiply by 80 times 10 to the third, and I get that FF equals, let's look at that, 42,000, 483 newtons, okay, which is 42.48 kilonewtons. And now that I know that, I can multiply by 0.44155 times, and I get that FA equals 18.758 newtons, which is 18.76 kilonewtons. So now, when I need to find stress, okay, um, stress is N over A. So if I want to know the stress of AB, which should equal the stress of CD, okay, it's going to be that internal force from AB divided by the area of AB. So I get 18.75. Seven five eight newtons divided by pi over four point zero three meters squared. Okay, pi as a number four divided by point zero three times point zero three times and divided by 
and I get 26537808. That's a very long number, so I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 26.54123456. That's a mega, okay, mega Newton per meter squared, which is a mega Pascal. And I need to check yielding, and yielding was 70 times 10 to the 6. This is less than 70 times 10 to the 6, which is 70 megapascals. So that checks out as okay. Then we're going to find the stress in EF, which is the force in EF, divided by the area of EF. And we have 42483 newtons divided by pi over 4.04 meters squared equals, okay, 42483, enter. Highest number, 4 divided by 5, 6, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and I get another very large number. One, two, and this is in Newtons per meter squared. This is in Pascals. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I get 33.81, one, two, three, four, five, six, is a megapascal, which is less than our 207 megapascal, which was our yielding, so we get check. So our answer then is, I'm going to erase that so I have room for my boxes, but I just want to make sure we check that off. Okay, so my, my stress then for AD is 26.54 megapascal, and my stress for EF equals 33.81 megapascals, and I should be consistent. This is actually a negative because it's in compression, and there we go. There's our answers.